Now, look here, Ibrahim, old chap. This is the third time you have been found guilty of raping underage girls. And uh, normally uh, it would be incumbent upon me to pass a custodial sentence. However, uh, new judicial guidelines mean that I have to take a number of points into account in calculating uh, your sentence. Uh, first of all, you were brought up in a council estate in Lambeth, and consequently it can be said that you are from a deprived background. Secondly, neither of your parents went to university, uh, and accordingly perhaps we can say that you were brought up in relative poverty. Thirdly, uh, you have a low level of education. Uh, this is mainly because you stopped going to school at 13, because you just couldn't be bothered. But nevertheless, I must take this into account. And of course, you are a member of a BAME community. You are an ethnic minority. And uh, this certainly means that you will be a victim of uh, structural racism. Um, and indeed, it may be argued that your raping of uh, underage white girls brought up on council estates is an understandable means of venting your frustration against white privilege. This being the case, I sentence you to six months in prison, but I'm going to suspend the sentence for two years and request that you do 80 hours of unpaid community service. And hopefully this will teach you that raping underage girls is a really mean thing to do. Take him down. Posey Parker, you have been found guilty of saying in the privacy of your own home that in order to be a woman, you must have a vagina and that in order to be a man, you must have a penis. This is a most egregious hate crime. I sentence you to two years in prison. Take her down. Hello, 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 and welcome to this edition of The Jolly Heretic. Now, today, I would like to talk about anarcho-tyranny, and I would like to talk about how we, as a society, are descending into anarcho-tyranny. This is where you have ideological fanatics that strongly police what you can and can't say, but do absolutely nothing about enforcing traditional laws, uh, which means that society is increasingly dangerous and unruly, and that you just, you have, you're spending so much time thinking about how to look after yourself and to not be a victim of crime, that you really don't have time to get together and try and depose the authority in question. Before I do that, can I ask you please, please, please to subscribe. Could you subscribe here on YouTube, and also could you subscribe on my Substack, that's the jollyheretic.com, where I put all of the spiciest content, all of the stuff that I dare not put on YouTube, in person interviews, all kinds of good fun, and where if you like what I do, you can support me for as little as the cost of a pint of beer a month. So please, please, please subscribe here and subscribe over on the jollyheretic.com. Right, so anarcho tyranny. Anarcho tyranny was a, f um, a phrase that uh, was uh, coined by an American journalist by the name of Sam Francis. And the essence of it, as I said, uh, is that the society is highly, highly doctrinaire. It enforces rigorously uh, its ideology. It has all kinds of pseudo-religious dogmas and things which you can't question. Essentially, it has a morality, a morality uh, which it very strongly enforces and which those that are in charge of the society are able to ascend to their positions of power via this morality and say that they are the most moral and therefore you cannot question the morality, because if you question the morality, you question the reason why they have power, and therefore you bring them down. So you mustn't be allowed to do this. So it has particular moral strictures that you cannot be allowed to question, um, such as the ideologies of multiculturalism, of uh, environmental determinism, of all of the kind of woke ideologies, the idea that, you know, that, that we have where we are obsessed with equality and harm avoidance, and these people virtue signal that they are the most obsessed with equality and harm avoidance, and this gives them a moral power and they're allowed to be in charge that, um, but then they do absolutely nothing about enforcing traditional law and order, about actually protecting the people. This means that the people live in a state of anarchy uh, in which they the police will not protect them, uh, in which criminals are allowed to run riot, and in which they basically have to be so concerned about looking after themselves and making sure they're not the victims of crime that they really don't have the time or the energy to be able to seriously challenge the government. So it's a really uh, rather brilliant system, anarcho-tyranny, if you want to stay in power, and it is the system that we increasingly have. Why do we increasingly have it? Well, one of the reasons is because we have flipped over from being a group-oriented society that is interested in 
structure and order and 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 so forth and tradition uh, and in group loyalty uh, and uh, obedience to traditional authority and sanctity of traditional ideas to an individually oriented society that is obsessed with the notions of, a, of anti-structure, i.e. of tear, of seeing all things that are powerful as bad and all traditions as bad and thus tearing them down, which is a left-wing way of seeing the world, of being obsessed with harm avoidance and, and then competitively signalling our obsession with harm avoidance, such that you get to a point where you say that uh, it is wrong to, to, to harm criminals, it is wrong um, to punish criminals, we, it is, it, you, you must sympathise with them, you must try to understand them you must try and uh, you must try and feel how they feel and equality this idea that we are all equal and therefore it follows from this that you can't make assertions about traditional notions of right and wrong the criminal is equal to you um the criminal um must be understood and and empathized with uh, the criminal's world view is a difference of kind not a difference of quality and how dare you come down and say that there's a there's a, there's a problem with it so this leads to a situation uh, via a sort of competitive virtue signaling on equality and harm avoidance where you don't uh, enforce the law against traditional criminals because you are so concerned with understanding their harm done to them and you are so concerned with, with, with saying that oh, they are the victims of an unequal society uh, that the crime is not their fault that the crime is the fault of society and therefore you give them increasingly light sentences uh, and therefore you allow them to run free and therefore you have anarchy. Now this is what is increasingly happening. It's been reported in the newspapers today uh, that uh, uh, judges are being advised to give lighter sentences to convicted criminals be, uh, and by taking into account whether they are from deprived backgrounds, whether they are from impoverished backgrounds, whether they have low educational attainment, whether they have been the victims of discrimination and whether they live in insecure housing. Now, what this basically means, in, in, well, the counter-argument is this is unfair. It means if you're middle class and you commit a crime, you will receive a harsher sentence than if you are working class uh, and you commit a crime. It means that if you are white, you will receive a harsher sentence than if you are non-white. But, um, of course, it, it, it means more than that. Because this, it fails. One of the dogmas of multiculturalism, one of the dogmas of the leftist regime, is environmental determinism. Is this idea that you, you virtue signal and virtue signal about people all being um, equal, and you and you and you eventually you, you say, well, we're we're all victims of something. Nothing is our fault. Um, it's it's all to do with environment. But of course, it's not to do with environment. When you take twin studies and you take twin adoption studies, so you have twins that are raised apart. What you find is that approximately 50% of what of the variant of why it is that one person commits a crime and one person doesn't is genetic. 18% is a matter of shared childhood environment. So only 18% is a matter of background. Everything else is a matter of genetics and what the genetics causes you to do in adulthood. So what this means is that criminality is overwhelmingly genetic. It is mainly a product of genes. And this makes perfect sense, of course, because what is it that, what are the traits that predict criminality? Well, one of them is low intelligence. Intelligence in adulthood is about 80% genetic. Overwhelmingly, it is a product of genes. The other is psychopathic personality, low impulse control, low rule following, low agreeableness, high neuroticism, meaning that you're temperamental and feel negative feelings strongly. These traits are between 50 and 70 percent genetic based on twin studies. So what this policy would do by reducing, uh, 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 these are the traits, of course, that predict criminality but they are also the traits that predict socioeconomic status. Socioeconomic status across time uh, seems to be about 70% genetic. And socioeconomic status is very substantially a reflection of intelligence and of personality. And indeed, um, in, um, uh, intelligence predicts both socioeconomic status achieved and socioeconomic status born into because of the strong genetic component. So if you reduce sentences for people because they are of low socioeconomic status, you are, sim you are simply reducing sentences for criminals. But full stop. Because criminals are overwhelmingly likely to be 
of low socioeconomic status because the traits, the genetic traits which predict being of low socioeconomic status also predict criminality. Genetically, forget about the environment. The, the, G, the genetics of criminality is the same as the genetics of low socioeconomic status. So if you reduce um, uh, these the sentences on people because of their low socioeconomic status, all you are doing is giving criminals lighter sentences. And all you are doing is therefore creating a more dangerous society. As President Bukele uh, in El Salvador has shown, all you have to do to basically uh, pretty much abolish murder um, in your country is... Before I continue with the red pills, I must quickly remind you of a white pill. Whatever disasters we are going to witness, the world will keep spinning because the conservative and the religious are having more children than the progressives, meaning that eventually all spiteful mutants will be bred out of the gene pool and society will function once again like it used to. You've obviously heard this argument before from me and I've developed it in my book, The Past and the Future Country, The Coming Conservative Revolution with my co-author, Joe A. Rayner Hills. You should definitely read that book, but if you haven't got the time to read it, I can offer you a shortcut. There is in fact a very good summary of our core arguments available which you can listen to in just under 20 minutes on Learjant.com. Learjant is a new app where you can read and listen to short summaries of all the key arguments of many based books. These are all under 25 minutes long so you can finish the whole book while you're out and about, in the gym or on your way to work. Now you might have heard of some competitors with a similar offer, but the big difference is that you will never find my books or books as the bell curve on these platforms. Learjant, on the other hand, is a platform run by based people who specifically want you to know about my research and those of others like me. So go on to learjant.com now and sign up with my promo code TJH for a 10% discount. Are you ready for the future of the West? 